What's up guys? Welcome back to Project Time Garage. Well, as promised, the next video on this Pathfinder is the major under the hood junk. So we've got a timing belt kit, which is the timing belt, the timing belt tensioner, and a, another little spinny thing of some sort down there. Uh, also got a water pump, because the water pump is right there at the timing belt. So if you're there, you may as well change it. And while we're that deep in it, we're also going to put a thermostat in this thing. Um, goal for this project is to get it together, get it going, and then we'll go take this thing for a drive. So you guys can actually ride in it, and I can actually ride in it more than three seconds through a field. Also, in order to help propel fleas and ticks for up to 30 days, or zero days, subscribe to my channel. Logo right down there. It may not repel those fleas and ticks, but what do you got to lose, right? You'll still be subscribed to my channel, so that's a win. Well, I guess this project's not gonna do itself. We should get started. All good in the garage projects begin with a hood pop. I'm gonna go ahead and get this battery um, out of here because it's really weak, 10 of 2018, and I want to uh, I want to put it on a charger while I'm doing this stuff. Boy, this thing is, even the terminals are junk. Needs some work, needs a lot of work, look at that, yikes. That's breaking loose. Yeah, we got some work to do on that. Got a bungee cord holding it in. That's worth some points. Yeah, there. Custom. We'll get that on charge. Now the first thing we got to get out is the fan shroud. I don't know how much coolant is in this thing. I can take that off without disturbing the coolant. 10 millimeter? Yes it is. That'll just make getting this shroud off here a lot easier. Not much. A lot less than I thought there would be. This air intake. I guess that's an air intake tube off of it. I'll pull a bolt off something. I like to try to put it back in where it goes when possible. It just makes reassembly that much easier. All right, we have a couple of fan shroud bolts. I have one here and one way down there. Yeah, right down there, which you probably can't see, but it's Phillips head on the bottom of the shroud. All right, with those screws out, should be a matter of just lifting this thing out of here. Yeah, like that. Now, one thing you didn't get to see was me removing this piece from the bottom. See, it has this piece that fits on the bottom that kind of completes the shroud. And you have to snap this part off in order for the, the fan to clear. So it sits up like so. And what you've got is over here on the side at about, I don't know, four o'clock and eight o'clock are these um, are these squeezy tabs right here on the side. So you'll take the squeezy tab and push it, pops loose, do the same on the other side, squeeze it, pops loose, and this whole bottom part just falls out. Just remember to put that back in before you put your shroud back together when you're done with the project, because I'm sure that needs to be there for proper cooling. All right, what next? I'm gonna say we go to Fanville, USA. Fan has what appears to be 10 millimeter um, nuts on the back of it. That's one thing I don't like about the little spinny head wrenches. They're spinny when you don't want them to spinny. I use 
use this to turn this around until I can get over here and snatch this one loose. These belts are kind of loose, actually. There we go. Now then, should be able to hold the belt down and finish popping these loose. Oh, all these belts are new loose but new so the next thing I'm gonna take off or loosen up is this power steering pump and if you see there's a bolt head right there and the easiest way to get to that to loosen it is to go through this access hole here so what we need to do is we need to turn this thing around to where this access hole is lined up to us there like so now, shine the light through there, and you see the bolt that I'm talking about right there. If we can go through the front, loosen it. Not take it out, just loosen it. Next, there's a 12 millimeter down here on this tensioner that should loosen up the tensioner and allow it to move some. And finally, on the back side, wow, that is dark as can be, isn't it? On the back side of this this uh, power steering pump, you can go all the way to the very bottom, and you feel I think it's about a 12 millimeter bolt. You won't be able to see this, and I won't be able to show it to you. But you basically, as you turn the bolt, it starts to remove tension from this uh, from this belt. So I'm going to turn it, remove tension from this belt. We'll get the belt off. All right, I ended up uh, loosen, loosening the uh, power steering pump and just taking the pulley right off of there because it was a whole lot easier to do. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this idler here. This belt is really, really loose anyway. So, and that's going to be replaced as part of the, as part of the kit. So that's going to be new. Feels a little gross anyway. I have a feeling that thing right there was was maybe no good anyway. Well, sounds okay. I'm really surprised about that. Oh, okay. Good. That's out of the way. So we can get this belt off now and the alternator belt off. I'm real happy to see that both of these are, are new belts, like really new belts. All right, that gets us down, I guess, to this uh, this air conditioning bracket here. Looks like it's got three bolts, one here, one here, one here. I wonder if those are 14 like everything else has been on this rig. Does look like it. I guess we'll just start here, see how many of these we can break. Not that one, not that one. Not that one. All right, while our coolant is draining mostly in the floor, I thought I might show you the um, the the front pulleys or the the crankshaft pulleys. There are six or five or something ten millimeter bolts in there. Short ones. You pull those out, and once you do that, see they go there. Let's do that. You can pull this whole thing off the front. Like so. Now the only thing really stopping us at this point is going to be around this timing cover. All of these bolts, and there there are several of them, they go all the way around this thing. You just basically see a bolt, take out a bolt. Um, I won't be able to get this lower section here off until I pull this uh, this coolant hose here. I'm just 
waiting to the last minute so I can drain as much as I can out into the bucket and onto the floor. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get, I'm going to go ahead and get um, as many of these bolts here removed as I can. All right, so there's this big tube that goes from here to here, probably crankcase vent stuff. Well, that's got to pop out. Getting looser. I think that might be it. I think that might be loose. Let's see if we can just pull it apart here. And what about on this side? Hope I can get it out just enough to get it kind of out of the way without having to get too serious with it. In fact, that right there might be enough to let me do this job. I don't know. I think I'm going to go ahead and pull. Hey, look, this right here is not even on there. Somebody's been here before. Looks like I might pull a whole lot of different hoses out of the way to get what I'm trying to get here. Yeah, I got three hose clamps stacked up here that none of them belong where they're going. All right. There's that. This. Yep, I think right here I can get to put on what I need to do. There's our belt. Dang, it's new. Yeah, it's a new belt. I'll be darned. Okay. All right. Time to get this coolant hose out of my way. See how much more coolant we can lose. Look, we have a mouse nest right there or something. That pipe's held in with that big bolt right there. Now let me pull that out. Okay, with all of those out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and zip off all of these down here and we'll get this lower uh, timing cover off of it. I'll bring you back when I get those bolts zipped out. All right, once you get all that off, you need to pull this nut out of the, of the center of the uh, flywheel damper. And you can actually you can actually pull this off. It's, it does not require a press. Just don't pull it off so hard that you run it through the radiator. That's my fear right now. There we go. All right, see, there we go. Comes right off. Now, we should be able to get to the one remaining bolt that's at the very bottom down here, holding us up. At that point, this cover should come off and there we go so that is our timing belt completely exposed make sure not to lose this half moon key that is so super important this don't lose that we're getting ready to pull this uh, this timing belt off here but here's what we need to make sure of before we go any further we need to make sure that our timing marks line up correctly and here's the deal I have number one cylinder down here at top dead center compression stroke I've verified that then I have you probably can't see this at all because lighting is miserable then I have a a, um, 
a dot stamped into the front of that cam right there. And that dot corresponds with a like a raised divot right there on the um, on my backing plate here. So I've got this notch and this notch lined up. Then over here, same thing. I've got a notch stamped into the, the tooth from the factory here, and I've got the same divot there. All right, so those two are lined up. That means my cams are lined up. Also, I don't know if you can see back in there or not, but check out all of the weeds and stuff that are back there in that thing. Is that not crazy? We gotta get that out of there. All right, moving on. Down here on our crank, there on that bottom tooth, you'll see that divot stamped in that. Well, that divot is supposed to line up with this corner mark right here, this shiny corner mark. That's the nearest I can tell, according to what I'm reading in the, in the little manual thing. So anyway, that's what we've got right now. And also, for what it's worth, if you'll look at this cam here, at this old timing belt, see the, the line here on the top of it? That line is supposed to be over this right here, so whoever did this job before didn't get the cam belt on there, you know, halfway right anyway. I mean, it's in time, but it's just the belt isn't, you know, it ain't right. So, let me set you down here, and let's get this tensioner loosed up, loosened up, and we're going to pull this, pull this thing off. Once that nut is loose, you can take a, a Allen wrench. There's a hole, let's see if I can show you on this one. There's a hole right down there for an Allen wrench. And you can take the Allen wrench and you can remove tension from it. And with tension removed, you can start sliding everything off. I'm just gonna go ahead and slide this tensioner out of here. That'll make my life much easier. We're going to come off with the old belt. Like so. Alright, let's get this thing put back on. We've got our spring transferred over. Okay. So we get that stuck back on there, like that. We're just going to leave it loose for a minute. Okay, time to pull the water pump. You got six bolts around it here or so. Five or six bolts around it here or so. You got some bolts around it here. Let's hope none of these break. I don't think they will because I don't, I'm pretty sure this timing belt job has been done fairly recently. The belt looked really, really good. In fact, it looked good enough that I considered not doing this job. But, you know, since I'm this far into it, I'll hate it if I don't. So, we doing it. All right, good, they all came out. All right, let me set these out of here and I'll bring you guys back when it's time to pull the water pump off. With the water pump off, I'm gonna turn my attention to the thermostat housing and hope I don't break bolts there. That one went. That one went. Good stuff. I think before we put this thing back together, we may spin it outside and give her a drink of Gunk Engine Bright and um, kind of clean it up a little bit. I'll read it. May as well. It's here. We'll get our new water pump and stuff on it. Get our timing belt back on it. So we can start it momentarily. At least I don't believe there's anything that would prevent me from starting it. Can't think of anything right off. Once I, of course, once I get the timing belt, water pump, and all that back in there. Sure, we won't have a fan. But 
to start it up and back it up 12 feet. Nobody cares. Let's see what's this held on here with. Ugliness. Held on there with ugliness. Can I just give it a little tap? Yep, sure can. Good. And here is our Be in pretty good shape actually. That's a it's not gonna be a not an OEM one because it says USA. So if it were if this were uh, original it'd probably be like a Denso. At least it'd be made in Japan. Okay, the boring process of cleaning off all these gasket surfaces and stuff. That's next. So I'll bring you back when everything's cleaned up. We'll bolt the water pump back on it. All right, time and belt time. I've already got our new tensioner on here and I've taken the tensioner and I have set it at its least tense position. So loosest position and I've tightened it down. So I'm not having to fight with it. So I'll come here and our cams are still lined up nicely. I'm gonna try and just put the cam on Let's see what this ends up looking like here. I think that's wrong. That looks wrong. I'm a tooth out right there. So I need to get it tighter around this crank like that right there maybe. Yeah, like that maybe. Let's see what that looks like. Then we'll come back around. I'm going to slide everything forward some. Just to give me a little bit extra room to, to work. A little bit extra slack. All the slack I can get indeed. Alright, so there we go. Let's slide this on and see where our marks are. So, this one is lined up. This one is lined up. Our crank is lined up. All right, that's good. Let's slide this on here. And we'll go ahead and tension this thing. In order to tension it, I will first go ahead and loosen it. Nope, I won't with that. Socket will I? How about this socket? Much better. So I'll loosen that up and you can see that it already starts to try and tension up some. We'll take our hex key, put it in there and rotate it until it's tight. I think I might go just a touch tighter with it. I don't want to, you don't want to get these things too tight. You'll just stretch the belt prematurely. That's all you'll do. But I think this one can handle just a touch more like that. There. And we'll lock that down. And that tighter belt is in there and tensioned. Everything looks to be lined up. I think what we should do probably now is go ahead and start the thing up and let's make sure that everything works. I mean, obviously we don't have any front pulleys. We don't have anything at all. All right, let's go ahead and put the lower timing cover back on it. And when we get this on there, then we're going to, um, I'm just going to get a couple of bolts in it. We're going to go ahead and put the 
um, harmonic balancer on it. All right, there. I now wanna go ahead and put my front uh, damper and my pulleys on it. Okay, I went ahead and bolted the pulleys back on this because now I realize you don't have to pull this off. So maybe I'll remember to put that in the beginning of the video. Look at there, still on top of the center and everything. It's pretty good stuff. All right, big bolt in the front, tighten it down. And then we're going to start this thing up and just make sure that we're okay. Okay, there's nothing standing in our way of doing a quick test fire. There's nothing on the front of the engine, yes, I know, but we don't need anything other than engine and timing to make this thing go right now. I don't care about power steering, don't care about alternator, don't care about air conditioner, don't care about water pump, don't care about fan. There's no cooling in it. Not going to hurt anything in the world to start it. Make sure our timing is right before we go put it back together. So stand by. Hear that exhaust leak back there? That's aggravating. Okay, it runs. I'm happy. Okay, success. I'm totally content putting it back together now. I don't feel like we're going to have anything make us tear it back down again. Okay, back together we go. All right, guys, let me show you where we're at. So far, I've got the thing started and moved out. Um, I didn't put it back together because I wanted to take some engine bright and kind of get rid of some of this grease and grime and muck down here. Let me show you where we're at. So we've got two cans of gunk foamy engine bright in service and doing its magic. You see, I went ahead and put the timing covers back on it, upper and lower. And I've got the belts back on it, just sort of temporarily. None of them are tight yet. It's perfectly fine to do this right here, just to back it out of the garage, which is right there, like three seconds. So let's get the pressure washer fired up and see what, what this thing looks like when we're done.
Well, there you go. We're back together with it. Everything's pretty well tidied up. It doesn't look real clean, even though we did wash it, but uh, still pretty dirty. I don't know if you can see down there or not, but um, that exhaust manifold has got some new studs on it. I did that while I was at it. My intention was to film that, but let me tell you, that had to be some of the worst angles I've ever seen to, to get your hands into. You know, I had to drill out a couple of those studs and, you know, cast iron or steel, steel bolts with, uh, with uh, aluminum head and it's just, it was just a mess. But I got it, so the exhaust leak is done, so it's not loud anymore. So there's, at least there's that. Let's see, what else have we done here? Rewire loomed this, got it somewhat cleaned up. So it's in there correctly. Fix this, this mess was all janky when I first got it. It was all bolted around to the side and this was messed up looking. So got that taken care of. Got us a proper genuine Nissan OEM battery hold down. So that's fixed and good. Ended up not replacing any of the belts because if you look at them, they are basically brand new. So I think the, the uh, previous owner, my buddy, replaced those. I did ask him about that, if he'd replaced them or not, and he just couldn't remember. And I can't really remember what was done with it. I worked on the truck some when he first got it, like, just like, you know, helping him out, just kind of hanging out buddy time. But I don't really remember what all was done to it either. So uh, we got a set of tires on it. So that's done and better. And what else? We stuck an old um, head unit in here, the one out of the Starion. I think that was one of my last videos. So we got that. Made the dome light work. That was pretty much a bulb. Whole lot left to do on this little thing. But uh, I believe uh, I believe when I first did the intro to this thing, I promised you guys a ride in it. So I think we should make good on that promise. And uh, let's cut to some, uh, some gratuitous driving footage. So let's jump out on the interstate. Kind of see how it does. I'm gonna drive this thing for the rest of the week. And um, just make sure that it's shook down properly and that nothing is wrong. cruising along at about 70 or so on the interstate aside from the tack not working the car runs pretty good drives really well I just had the uh, you saw the tires and then I had a fresh alignment on it a little bit noisy in here um, I have to do something about my uh, my window felts and my uh, my door channel weather stripping back roads driving I plan on driving this thing to work all week long just to make sure that it's properly shaken down and that there are no problems got to get that tack fixed Drives and rides really, really well. I'm actually surprised how nice it is. Well, 
first major obstacle is down on this thing. Actually, the first couple of major obstacles are down on it. Got the timing belt on it. That's all back together. And um, actually, we got some tires on it. And we have the uh, exhaust leak fixed. So three major obstacles down on it. Um, sorry I didn't record that, but it was uh, <laughs> it was it was a rough business. It, uh, if I had had access to a lift, I would have um, I would have definitely recorded it. But the way it was, it's just there's just no good way to get a camera in there from the ground and such. I really should just bone up and buy a lift, probably. Uh, anyway, so uh, so that's gonna do it here. I think the next video that we're gonna do on this is probably gonna involve putting the, uh, the fender on it and fixing that crinkle bleedingness up there. And we need to get some headlights in it, um, or at least one headlight for sure. I'll probably just buy a pair of headlights for it because I think they're pretty cheap on Amazon. So we'll do that. I'll probably go ahead and replace the side marker lights while I'm at it. My goal is to get the front end and the front corner all buttoned up, all the lights working up there, everything like they're supposed to be fog lights replaced and get it back to road worthy you know and, and somewhat presentable up there so we'll do that uh, also I have on order all the replacement window weather stripping and all the replacement dew wipes or window felts all the way around well I don't know if it's all the way around I think the two front doors are what I found so we'll get that stuff replaced also uh, we are gonna probably go ahead and do a quick uh, polish job on this thing just to see how it comes out I have a few issues also that need to be worked out on it the it has keyless entry slash security system from uh, from the factory but the programming procedure that I have in the Nissan service manual doesn't work so uh, so that's uh, that's an issue and I'm not so sure that the alarm module or keyless entry module is any good so we're going to uh, I've got the schematic for all that so we'll sit down and do a test on that in one video um, I've got a driver's door lock on this side that doesn't work um, it doesn't work mechanically so if you put the key in the outside and turn the key back and forth the lock doesn't go up and down this thing does have the ability to, you know, bump the key twice and, and the electric door locks will unlock everything. So at least that works. So as long as we've got a battery, we can still get in that door. But with no keyless entry and no reliable mechanical way to unlock that door, uh, it's just a little bit of a uh, little bit of a question. I'll probably do a hide a key somewhere on this thing just to make sure that I don't get locked out. Oh, that's another thing it does that's bizarre. So you can't leave the keys in this car at all unattended because it will straight lock you out. Um, about three or four times now, I've just been sitting in the garage, not even touching the car, not even close to the car, and you just hear the door locks go choke, and they lock. <laughs> the first time, the keys were in the car. Luckily, I had a spare set hanging on a peg up at the house, so I had to... Uh, I had to run up the house and grab those to let myself back in. Had I been in a parking lot somewhere, yeah, I'd have been calling my wife to come bail me out. So we got to figure out at least what that is, or at least get a key on the outside of this vehicle for now. Um, let's see, what else? Beauty-wise, we're going to go ahead and replace the crack dash, or do something with the crack dash, because I don't really like it. Um, okay, and that's the foreseeable future. We might also do something in the rear. Uh, I think the rear of the, the truck sags just a little bit, and I ain't about that Carolina squat, so I want to get that fixed. Uh, I don't know exactly what I'll do if it's just spring sagging. I'm, I'm not even sure what it's got for suspension underneath the back. I haven't even looked. Uh, to be honest, I've been spending my time so many other places on it. But at least we're up, and it seems to be reliable. I've put about 120 miles on it now um, since the timing belt, and... Um, so far so good so anyway guys uh, as usual hey, I really appreciate you watching the videos uh, if you do like this video 
uh, please consider giving me a thumbs up down there uh, in the comments. That actually helps the analytics on the video. Uh, also, if you haven't already subscribed, I really would appreciate uh, if you just take a second and just click that subscribe button down there. Uh, if you're feeling frisky, you can also ring the little notification bell, and that way you'll get notifications when I post a video, which is once a week, uh, usually Thursday or Friday. Here lately, it's been Fridays, but uh, I've had the channel up and going now for a little over a year, and so far, I don't think I've missed once. So uh, anyway, appreciate it, guys. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe. Tell all your friends about us. Guys, I'll see you next time.